ending order. Second, GCF, always. Third thing we're doing is counting terms. If there are four terms, what method do we use to factor? Grouping. I'm waiting on Landon to put his phone up and get out some paper and take some notes. All right. Four terms we're grouping, three terms, the X method. Talked about that the last couple of days. We practiced that for the last three days. Today, we're going to get into two terms. And this is where the difference of squares comes in. Okay. So we're still going to see some three-termed uh, polynomials here. Uh, but we're also going to see uh, some two-term polynomials that, that, are, that can be done with differences of squares. We're going to see some that can't be done with, with differences of squares, but it looks close to the same. So we're going to be able to recognize when that's an option. Okay, so first thing we want to do is uh, let's do one of these. And the directions are just like before. We're just going to factor if possible. If not, if it can't factor, what's it called? Prime, okay? So if it won't factor, we'll call it prime. All right, so we'll start with something like this. X squared um, plus 8X plus 16. Is that in descending order? Yes. Is there a GCF across the whole problem? No. So then we count the terms. How many terms are there? Three. So that means we're going to do what? X method. So what goes on the top part of the X here? 16. 8 goes in the bottom. What multiplies to be 16 and adds to be 8? 4 times 4. So if you do the grouping, you can do it this way. I kind of keep waiting for somebody to come up with a shortcut for this part, but nobody has mentioned it, so I'm not going to mention it. What do we notice about our factors here? The matching one is x plus 4. The stuff in front is x plus 4. It's the same factor twice. So I could, re I could write that like that. As x plus 4 squared. Because it's the same factor two times. Okay. This is a special case. What this is called is a perfect square trinomial because when you factor it, it ends up being the same factor twice. Okay. The method of factoring is not any different, though. It's a trinomial. You still use the X. You still work it out the same way. Uh, the, what makes you recognize is it a perfect square trinomial is the fact that when you factor it, you get the same factor two times. Okay. Um, Example B, maybe we had something like 4x squared um, something like that. bigger numbers but still trinomial right it's in descending order is there a GCF four and fifty six have something in common but forty nine messes that up okay so when you do your X for this one yeah it's a bigger number so four times forty nine so that's hundred and sixty plus uh, 36 would be 196. Uh, 
right. That should have been, I'm sorry guys, this should be not 56, but 28 in the middle. I thought for trying to do it in my head. So 28 goes in the bottom of that. Otherwise it wouldn't factor. What multiplies to be 196 and adds to be 28? Well, here's, here's the thing that, that helps you with this. Is look at the first term and the last term. What kind of numbers are 4 and 49? They're not prime, but they're a special kind of composite number. What's special about 4 and 49? They're both perfect square numbers, right? So when you see that and you're trying to factor it, 196 has got a lot of factors to it. 2 goes into it. You keep going. There's a bunch of numbers that go into 196. So finding the right one is tough. But when you see the clue that it's perfect square and perfect square, think, okay, what squared is 196? 14. What's 14 plus 14? So the right numbers there. Okay. And then there's no, no change to it from there. Fill in the 20, you know, replace the 28 with 14X and 14X group. What's the GCF of the first group? Four doesn't go into 14. 2x would be 2x plus 7, right? What do 14 and 49 have in common? Positive 7. So your factors are 2x plus 7 and 2x plus 7. Or you could write it 2x plus 7 squared. When you see square numbers involved, think, oh, it's probably kind of special because they are square numbers. And that's that's the special part of that. As far as how you factor it, you still got to do the same methods we did the last couple of days with the with the X method and grouping. If it's a trinomial, that's the way you're going to do it. Doesn't matter that it's a special case. The special case part doesn't come in until the end when you're rewriting your answer. That's what makes that special. Those are called perfect square trinomials, is what they're called. There are questions that I've seen on, on end of course practice tests and things that say, they just ask, is this a perfect square trinomial? And it's a yes or no question. The only way to tell is to factor it. Factor it out completely. And if it, if it does this, yes, it is. If it doesn't, no, it's not. Okay, that, it's an easy, easy thing. All right, so there's one special case. Let's look at the next special case. Tristan Holman, report to room 127. Okay, so we have x squared minus 16. Is that in descending order? In the right order, got x squared first, and then no plain x, and then a 16. So that it's in the right order. Is there a GCF across both terms? No. How many terms are there? Two. If there are two terms, that's when you can try to do difference of squares. In math, what, what kind of operation is a difference? Subtraction. Subtraction. So to be a difference of squares, what operation has to be in the middle? Subtraction. Okay. If it's a plus sign in the middle, that's not, it's not a difference of squares. Okay, so if it's a minus sign in the middle, it's a difference of squares, or possibly could be. It may not be either of those. This one is a difference of squares. The way I want you to look, think about this is think, what squared gives me x squared? Just plain x, right? x squared is x squared, right? What squared gets me 16? 4. 4 squared is 16. If you can rewrite it in that way, that means it is a difference of squares. And the factoring is really easy. It just, it get two factors. X goes in the front of both of them because that's, that's what's in the parentheses here. 
Four goes in the back of both of them because that's what's in the parentheses here. One's a plus, one's a minus. You're done. And it's very likely that I'll end up doing some of the ones that are on your work for today, just because we don't want to get too large on the square numbers. But So, is that in order? GCF? No. How many terms? Two. Is it a difference? Yes, because it's got a minus sign in the middle of it. So I'm going to try to do difference of squares. What squared is x squared? What squared is 25? What are our factors then? X plus 5x minus 5. And it doesn't matter if you put the minus first or the plus first. It doesn't matter. What if there's another, another number in there? Maybe it's something like uh, 9x squared minus 1. Is it in order? Is there a GCF? No. Uh, how many terms? Two. Is it a difference? Yes. So what do we know about nine? It's a perfect square. What squared is nine? Three. And to get the x squared, we need x. What squared is one? One. That, for whatever reason, that seems to be one that causes a problem sometimes, that it's one squared to get one. Now, what's the factors that go with that then? Three X plus one, three X minus one. Help Chloe out here. Yeah, that's what I this one earlier today. But we can work this one using some of our shortcuts here. Is it in order? Is there a GCF? Yes. Of? Four. Two goes into both of them, but four is bigger and it does go into both of them as well. So I'm going to pull a four out. What's that leave in the parentheses? X squared minus nine. Okay. Then the parentheses, the four is just hanging out now. So we're looking for what what would we do here? Is this a difference of squares? Yes, because x squared minus what's nine? Three squared. So this is really x squared minus three squared. So that's going to be x plus three, x minus three, and then we bring that four down that we pulled out earlier to get that. Differences of squares are usually the easy, to me, they're the easiest ones to factor because there's the shortcut to do that. All right. A sum of squares does not factor. So if you had something like, uh, like this, 9x squared plus uh, 25. Is it in order? Is there a GCF? No. Is it a difference? No. So it, it, if it isn't a minus sign somewhere in the problem, then it can't be a difference of squares because it has to be some subtraction in there for it to be a difference of squares. So this would be prime. Here's the one that can catch it though. I changed one thing about that problem and now it'll work. Where? Okay, so maybe negative nine x squared, but is it a difference? It's still addition between them. What could I pull out as a GCF to turn this into a subtraction problem? I can't pull out negative nine because 25 is not visible by negative nine. But what do both of them have in common? Three doesn't go in 25. One is the only thing they have in common. 
So if I pull out a negative one, I end up with 9x squared minus 25. Because that changes the sign of each of them, right? That's what dividing by a negative one does. Then, oh, it is a difference now. And I can factor that as a difference of squares. What squared is 9x? 3x. What squared is 25? 5. So our factors, 3x plus 5, 3x minus 5, and then we've got that negative 1 that we pulled out. That doesn't happen. This type of problem doesn't happen very often. But sometimes it shows up and you've got to be able to handle it. Okay, so that's why I do an example of it every time. So because you've got to be able to handle that, that negative that needs to be pulled out. If it's two terms, there's got to be a minus sign in it somewhere uh, for it to be a difference of squares. We get into algebra two, we do this thing called sum and difference of cubes, where cubed is an exponent of a three. Uh, sums of cubes can factor. Sums of squares cannot. So you've got to have some sort of minus sign somewhere in there to work with for it to be a difference of squares. So it just takes some practice and learn these shortcuts. Should be something we can finish up today uh, to, on practicing. Um, we're approaching toward the end here of, um, of the nine